upwards of $500 million, we call it half a billion dollars. He says, but don't worry, he says, we're going to get some money from the, from the Trade and Convention Center that, that's leftovers. We're, we're on budget, on time. Which budget? You went over $500 million, Mr. Campbell. You lied. <laughs> so, so $500 million over budget, and there's, what is it, 24, 42? It's all, whatever. A bunch of millions of dollars that are left over. That now they're gonna, that's how we're gonna fund PC Place. You're gonna keep paying and paying and paying. We don't know where the HST is going. They won't tell us. They're not gonna tell us how much the Olympics is gonna cost. It's going to Israel. You don't suppose HST might be here to pay down some of that to make them look not quite as bad? Maybe. So I think, of course I'm pessimistic anyway. So, <clears throat> yeah, so we're, we're, here we are. We're going to be paying up the wazoo. Now, my wife owns an apparel business in up in Vanderhoof, where I live. And in that little business, she does not pay provincial sales tax on the items that she buys from outside province to come in. Automatically, if she does this, then the then once the HST is in, seven percent increase on her cost, bringing everything in. Those costs have to be in turn passed to the consumers. For her to recover. Well, <clears throat> okay. So she's got all this stock sitting on the on the on the on the floor, same as every other small business that imports items. You don't pay provincial sales tax now. You will. You'll get to pay HST, harmonized sales tax. Isn't it just wonderful? It makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. <clears throat> no, you're going to pay more. You're going to pay through the nose, through the wallet, and. You are not going to get any benefit. The, the businesses, the small businesses, cannot afford this. Add to that, we'll just use the, the same $1.9 billion number that the provincial government's putting out there. You can't take $1.9 billion out of the pockets of consumers and make it pay for businesses. Because that's money that goes to taxes, not to product. So if you're a businessman or a woman and you have product on the floor that's not provincial sales tax now, and you add in provincial sales tax after with the HST, you are going to not sell some stuff on the floor because the people do not have the money to buy it. It's going to taxes, not product. Business people are being bamboozled and flim flammed just like we are as citizens. So this is our one opportunity, one opportunity to, to show that there is democracy potential in BC. We are told by, by all the pundits, the political observers, the colonists, and other, others that are maybe sold out, that this is a whole HST rallies and, and initiatives is a long shot. Okay, it's a long shot. But you know what? Better a long shot than no shot. This is our one chance to do something. If you haven't signed up to fight HST, if you haven't signed up to you know, volunteer in your constituency, we need you. We especially need you to encourage people in constituencies that aren't yours. If you know people in the north and the, the west coast of British Columbia who, and the interior who don't see anything happening, we encourage you to have them get a hold of fighthst.com, become volunteers in their area. They won't be alone. We have lots of materials to give them. And this is an easy one. This is an easy one. All we need is people who are registered voters, get registered with Elections BC, and it's learn, learn, to, learn what the, the rules are. And the the uh, organizers in each area will be more than happy to help out the captains and all the volunteers. And this we can work. We can send a message to the BC Liberals. We can send them a poison pill. Here's the law that's there. You can reject our right to, to run initiatives, and it's a poison pill, you die from that. You can run the initiative, have it go through, because I don't know too many people who are anxious to pay more taxes, so it will pass handily when it does go to a referendum. Then they'll be faced with the other option of, should we accept what the people have said? 
They can accept it or they can reject it. That's their right according to the way the law is written. Poison pill. They will die from that. Gordon Campbell, I don't expect to, to stay on as Premier past the Olympics. He wants to make a name for himself. He wants to be seen as some great guy in the history books. So I don't expect to see him at all past the, the uh, Olympics. After that, it will fall on whoever is after him to try and save the Liberal Party from ruin. Well, this is our way to make sure that doesn't happen. If you want to see the HSD removed, if you want to have one shot at actually doing something, this is it. I, I beg of you to sign up to the fighthst.com. Go there and sign up as a volunteer and let's get her done. Thank you very much, Matt. That uh, concludes our list of speakers at this point. I uh, just want to say, yes, Fight HST is the vehicle. We have legislation that uh, will uh, be the, the bullet, uh, if you, for lack of a better expression, to uh, force an issue upon this government that they can have to do something between election periods. And uh, so I urge everybody that um, listening to this, and will be listening to this over time, to um, get behind this with, uh, as Mike said, the Fight HST uh, organization at fighthst.com and uh, sign up and also uh, get your 10 or 15 people on your list to, to get signed up to this thing because uh, it has to be signed on a document with a signature. Everybody does all these online petitions. They are worth nothing. But they're putting together a bank at uh, Fight HST of people. The last time I heard, there's 127,000 have registered on the Facebook of um, Fight HST that's being sponsored by uh, 24 Hours uh, News Group. Uh, and, um, and from that uh, group, I understand that's what we'll be drawing down and, and helping people out volunteers. Mr. Vandersam in their, um, in their uh, brochures about the stage two, I've got a, a, a panel here about stage two, where they want to go, which is the recruitment for volunteers. And they're looking for 4,200 people across the province, which is uh, 85 ridings, about 50 people in each riding, to go out and, uh, and collect um, signatures. The uh, wall that we have to climb here is a 10% wall. It's required that every jurisdiction or every electoral district have 10% of eligible registered voters sign this petition. If one riding comes up short of that 10%, goes nowhere. It's, it's, it's on. There's a similar system of governance in, uh, in Europe, in Switzerland, where they have the same thing, initiative and referendum, referendum, and their requirement is 2% of the registered voters in each canton. So when they make the legislation, it looked real good as democracy, but now they made the threshold so high that, well, we're never going to have to worry about it. Well, I suggest to you, Mr. Campbell and the government of British Columbia, you better start worrying about it. Because we can make that threshold. We have the ability to make that threshold, and we can, we can do it. So uh, sign up, folks. Uh, tell all your friends. Sign up. And when the day comes to put that name and address